Hi, I'm Sebastian Estelund, and I'm here to tell you about Parmesan Sanitizer Guide to Greybox Fuzzing. So, in fuzzing, the general notion is that more coverage implies more bugs. But can we do better than that? Well, it turns out by actively targeting actual bugs, we're able to trigger bugs 40% faster. Well, how do we actually target bugs? Well, let's take a step back first. So, when you have a program and you have some weird behavior in it, you have some bug, how do you typically try to find out uh, the root cause of this bug? How do you try to triage the bug? Well, what I typically do is I pull out some sanitizers, I take my program, compile it again with san some sanitizers enabled, and see whether these sanitizers can give me some more information about uh, where the bug originates. So, what are these sanitizers? These are uh, development tools that are shipped by most uh, modern compilers. Uh, and these Sanitizer insert some runtime checks for possible bugs. So what they typically do is insert stuff like bounce checks or checks for integer overflows. Uh, so if you look to the right here, you see an example of a program that's uh, first non-sanitized and then sanitized with UB sanitizer to check for a pointer overflow. Well, there's a bunch of these uh, sanitizers that are shipped with compilers and all have their own speciality and which bugs uh, they're able to detect. So, of course, these uh, sanitizers are, are already used in fuzzing uh, pretty commonly. So over the years, fuzzer have, fuzzers have gotten better and better and better. And at some point, uh, most libraries have been well fussed. So finding new crashes, so that's the way typically how this feedback mechanism works in fuzzing, by the way, that you, a crash indicates a bug. Finding new crashes becomes pretty hard. So at some point, people switched over to actually uh, instrumenting the targets with sanitizers and then fussing for finding uh, sanitizer violations. We had a look at a few different sanitizers and found out that they're actually pretty good at detecting uh, most uh, common vulnerabilities. So we had a look at some existing vulnerabilities and these sanitizers are all they're able to find all of these vulnerabilities. Some sanitizers are also more targeted than others. So they instrument uh, fewer parts, like less uh, code paths, fewer parts, fewer basic blocks of the program. So they're actually really targeted at, and uh, insert instrumentation only at points where there's a high probability of there being a bug. So what we're going to do is actively target these sanitizer checks through fuzzing. That's where Parmesan enters the game. So Parmesan uh, consists of two main phases, an offline phase and an online phase with uh, three main components. So the offline phase, uh, in the offline phase, we do target acquisition, where we try to acquire the targets that we actually want to reach in the online phase. Uh, so in the online phase, we have the fuzzer, which uh, works in cooperation with the uh, dynamic control flow, flow graph to actually steer the fuzzing process towards these targets that we acquired. So let's have a look at target acquisition. How do we actually find these targets that we want to reach with fuzzing? Well, as I already might have mentioned, uh, what we want to do is target sanitizer checks. So we target branches where sanitizers insert some instrumentation. So how do we find these things? Well, luckily that's fairly simple. Uh, you take an existing program, you get the LLVM IR, then you take the same program, uh, compile it with a sanitizer and take diff of the LLVM IR. And luckily there's this LLVM diff tool. So we can extract the exact points where sanitizers insert some instrumentations. And the nice thing about this is, of course, it works for any kind of sanitizer. So you, you can instrument your program with whatever sanitizer and extract the targets and then try to reach these things. So it's very generic, this approach. So let's uh, have a look at how uh, we typically would uh, fuss a program, walk through a program through and reach these uh, sanitizer checks. So if we're in a pure coverage guided normal fusser, uh, what it would do is do a kind of uh, breadth first search through the program, trying to flip branches one at a time as it goes along. So it would like walk something like this through the program and at some point it reaches some of the targets, then it fusses a large part of the program, continues on until it has reached all its targets. A, tar uh, like a more directed approach, a targeted approach, uh, in, on the other hand, has some more inside knowledge of where the actual targets are that we want to reach. Uh, so we usually have a, we have a notion of distance to the targets. And what we do is simply try to flip branches that have a low distance to the targets that we want to reach. So a directed approach would do something like this. So it would actually try to take in a grid approach the first one that it wants to reach, 
Uh, now it has reached one of the targets, so then it tries to find another target that it wants to reach and so on. And after a while it will have, re yeah, might have reached all the targets. So what you can see here is there's no need to explore this whole big part of the program uh, that a normal coverage guide of Fuzzy would typically explore this because it adds no more coverage. But here we have the inside knowledge that, well, it might not be useful because there are no targets there, so no targets that we want to reach. So we can save a lot of time uh, while fussing. So then you might ask, okay, that's all fun, but uh, so you have you have your targets, you can reach them, okay, but what about these sanitizers that insert in, uh, instrumentation points all over the program, uh, so, so such as ASAN? So typically, the uh, ASAN instrumented program would look something like this. So it instruments a bunch of branches all over the place. And as you can see, this, if you target these things, we can do that, but it's basically running uh, coverage guided fuzzing. So we have to figure out something uh, to solve this issue. Well, that's target pruning. We remove some uh, checks so that it's not, that we don't really uh, go switch over to coverage guided fuzzing in the end. So we came up with two simple heuristics that we used uh, for removing uh, such targets. So the first one is a profiling uh, based one. And here the intuition is that we want to reach uh, targets in cold code. Uh, so code paths that are not executed that often. So we profile our program with some input and then remove the targets that we are able to reach with this input. Uh, so if you have a look at this picture over here to the right, it's basically you have a program with a hot path where you reach all these uh, checks anyways with mo most of the input and then you have the cold path with these uh, targets that are outside that and we actually want to actively try to reach these rare paths. The second uh, pruning technique that we came up with is a complexity based one uh, and the intuition here is that uh, if a certain function or basic block uh, gets more uh, instrumentation added by sanitizer it's probably more interesting since it's more complex and which generally would imply that there's a higher chance of being bugs in there. So these two uh, pruning techniques together uh, turned out to work pretty well for uh, what we want. Uh, and as you can see, we can remove a lot of these uh, targets by using this, uh, these uh, pruning techniques. So going from thousands of targets to hundreds of targets, which, which is a bit more manageable. So now you might say, okay, Fine, you have our targets. How do we actually uh, reach these in a smart way? Well, what we're going to do is, well, we use uh, solving, well, we try to solve branches, flip branches so that we reach our targets. Uh, we make use of dynamic data flow analysis so that we actually know which input bytes correspond to flipping a certain branch. And then we add uh, our distance calculation. We can prioritize branches based on the distance to our targets. So, the Parmesan and Fuzzer. Let's have a quick look at the implementation. Uh, we based our implementation on Angora, uh, which is a coverage by based uh, gray box fuzzer. Uh, Angora has a global queue for uh, what it wants to fuzz, consisting of conditionals and the seed that was used to reach that condition. So conditional in this uh, context is the same thing as a branch, right? Uh, and then it sorts uh, this whole queue of branches by uh, how many times it has run a certain, tried to flip a certain condition. So in Parmesan, what we do instead is we take the same approach, but also add a distance uh, uh, metric in there. So we sort by number of runs and also by distance so that we prioritize uh, branches that have a short distance to the targets. And well, how do we calculate this distance? Well, using our uh, dynamic control flow graph uh, component which we'll, I'll discuss here. So first of all, uh, existing uh, direct gray box fuzzers also have a notion of distance, right? So AFL Go uh, statically instruments the binary with some instrumentation that calculates the distance for a certain run of a program. So the, it adds some static uh, instrumentation to basic blocks to uh, get out one uh, distance metric. But as you can see, like the static approach is all, not always the best part. Like you can have this pre-graded approach, but as all Italians know here in the audience, you should always like to grate your cheese as close to using it as possible. So we want to go for a more dynamic approach where we can incrementally improve our control flow graph as we go along. But, and another thing that we can do with this uh, dynamic control flow graph is to fix indirect calls. So this is often an issue with static distance calculation. The, you, uh, having indirect calls is, uh, 
huge hurdle. So with this approach, we can actually know which input bytes determine uh, a certain uh, indirect call by seeing uh, the branch that determines a store to a function pointer. And if you fix these bytes, we already know uh, what the indirect call target is. So uh, our distance calculation will be, will be more accurate. For the evaluation, uh, first of all, we evaluate uh, against existing direct gray box fuzzers such as AFL Go. And we see that uh, adding a dynamic data flow analysis and a dynamic control flow graph significantly improves uh, how fast we can reach certain targets uh, by up to 290%. We also, uh, using our whole pipeline with target acquisition and the directed approach for reaching these targets, we can uh, outperform the latest to finding bugs compared to uh, coverage guided fosters with about 40%. Another cool side effect is that depending on the sanitizer we use for target acquisition, uh, we can find different types of bugs. We can kind of steer finding the bugs to a certain class of uh, bugs depending on which sanitizer we used, which is a pretty cool feature if you really want to focus on a certain class of bugs. So in conclusion, we have seen that off-the-shelf sanitizers are already commonly used when fussing, so it makes sense to actively try to target these things. Uh, add some dynamic uh, data flow analysis and a dynamic CFG component to actually get a better distance calculation on top of it, and you're able to find uh, bugs at a significantly faster rate. Thank you for listening to this talk. Uh, the code for Parmesan is available on GitHub. Uh, feel free to check it out. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be taking uh, questions and answer your questions uh, after this talk. Thank you.